Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1950, Part 55. This is the first, first part of the original publication, Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC number 31, published on December 7, 1998. And there's an, a letter from the editor of the SFMC, yours truly, Peter J. Ray. Hi, everybody, and Merry Christmas. <clears throat> I know you will enjoy this super terrific issue, which deals with the newlywed life of John and Ruth. John and Ruth. Still busy with work and school, but now all of the domestic responsibilities added on. Ruthie had the opportunity to just demonstrate her culinary talents, and she succeeded as John gained considerable weight. Good work, Mother. You're the best. Peter J. Ray, Manila, Philippines. Right up for Regina newspaper, the Leader Post. St. Peter's Church scene of double ring ceremony. Tall baskets of gladioli adorn St. Peter's Anglican Church, August 19, 1950, when Canon A.E.K. Crowther officiated at the double ring ceremony, which united in marriage Florence Ruth, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. George W. Smallshaw, Regina, and John Stuart Ray, son of Mr. and Mrs. Doran Ray of Sandusky, Ohio. Given in marriage by her father, the bride entered the church in a gown of white eyelet organdy over nylon fashioned, fashioned with an illusion yoke, lily point sleeves, and a train. Her fingertip veil of illusion misted from a lace cap. She carried a cascade bouquet of Johanna Hill roses and wore a rhinestone necklace and earrings, gift of the groom. <clears throat> The matron of honor, Mrs. J. N. Scott, wore a gown of white embroidered organdy over yellow, yellow nylon with a hopped skirt. She wore a halo of yellow nylon and matching mittens and carried a colonial bouquet of gladioli. The bridesmaids, Miss Carol Ray Sandusky, Ohio, and Miss Connie George Saskatoon, wore identical gowns of white embroidered organdy over green nylon with hooped skirts pale green nylon halos, and matching mittens. They carried colonial bouquets of yellow gladioli. <clears throat> the groom was, <clears throat> was attended by his brother, Mr. Richard Ray of Sandusky, Ohio. Ushers were Bud Smallshaw and Don Davis. A reception was held at the home of the bride's parents. Receiving with the bridal party were the, were the parents of the bride and groom. Mrs. Smallshaw chose a dress of midnight blue with white accessories and a gardenia corsage. Mrs. Ray chose a beige dress with brown accessories <coughs> and a corsage of red roses. The bride's table, centered with a three-tiered wedding cake and topped with tiny rosebuds, was adorned with silver candelabra with lighted white tapers. Mrs. F. Jelly and Mrs. L. E. Sillers poured. Servers were Mrs. D. Sillers, Miss Dor Doris Irwin, Miss Isabel Donahue, and Miss Doreen Steele. Messages of congratulations were read by Canon A. E. K. Crowther and Mr. J. O. Proby proposed a toast to the bride. For traveling, the bride chose a beige suit and coat with rust accessories. She wore an orchid corsage. The wedding trip included a trip by plane to Banff and Lake Louise and a Great Lakes cruise. The groom is a graduate of Oberlin College and is employed as a product development chemist. He is now completing his law degree at Cleveland Marshall Law School. The bride is completing her degree at Western Reserve University and is teaching in Cleveland. The couple will make their home in Cleveland. Out-of-town guests were Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Doran Ray, Miss Carol Ray, and Mr. Richard Ray of Sandusky, Ohio. Mr. and Mrs. George Smallshaw Sr. and Mrs. L. E. Sillers Estevan. Miss Donna Stewart Theodore and Miss Connie George Estevan. <clears throat> 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, August 26, 1950. Dearest Mother and Hi, My Family. How sorry I am to be just sending this wedding right up now, when both of you and Marion were so nice 
about getting it done quickly. I really shouldn't have left with it, but I should have read it there and made any changes. We've had one strenuous trip, and there just didn't seem any time when we did stop to write. I hope this will not be too late and that the picture is ready from the engravers. I'd meant to ask that they make John's, John's, it's okay if not possible now, tie a solid gray and would like the photographs done that way if it's possible. But I'll write more about them in a few days. <clears throat> the trip was strenuous but very good. We'd started south on that good road, but John could see I was unhappy at the prospect of the trip through the Dakotas, where I know no one, so he pulled us to the side of the road and asked what was wrong. So we turned back to Regina and went on that horrible Winnipeg road. It was so bumpy, we only made it to Whitewood, stayed at an old hotel. Someone stole our hubcap during the night, rather grim. However, seeing Bonnie and Jack in Winnipeg helped to make up for it, and we spent Friday night there. They have two very sweet little girls. Jack is now working for North Star Oil. The trip through Kenora was so pretty, and John saw a 23-pound fish caught, caught that impressed him so much. Border crossing was okay. We were so relieved. We made it to a cabin in northern Minnesota. <coughs> and drove on the next day, which was proving to be very wearying, but we had to make time. Then the luckiest thing happened. I noticed on the map a steamer route from northern Lake Michigan across southeast. As we drove to the town, I suggested we investigate it. We drove up to, ste to see a steamboat puffing and tooting away at 7 o'clock p.m. John asked when it left. In 15 minutes, and only one boat a day. We had supper on the boat and had a stateroom and arrived across the lake at 8 o'clock a.m. the next morning. We got our boat trip after all. It was only a half hour's drive to John's aunt's cabin at Glen Lake, and we arrived in time for breakfast. What luck! They had planned to leave early that morning, but then decided to stay over another day and were so thrilled to have us. Going that way, we managed to stop in at John's mother's about nine in the evening, and she is still all happy about the wedding and exclaimed over what good plans you had made. Connie, too, kept exclaiming about how well you'd planned it. They thought the pictures so good and want us to take them to Marion next Sunday when we go down for John's grandmother's 60th wedding anniversary. Carol came gleefully in, and her mother says she's been full of wedding ideas herself. They all seem to have enjoyed the trip, and John's mom said, Me meeting so many nice people. They took colored pictures of the church. It was 2.30 a.m. or later when John carried me over the threshold last night, so he was one tired boy after all that driving. For work today, but it was nice to come to a nice place, although we'll fill it up quickly. I'll write more extensively. There's so much to be done. I love you so much, and John will write too. He also wants to write to Bud. About this write-up of the wedding. I've been stumped for the first sentence, so used part of Marion's, and you can change it to something you like better. I won't mind at all. Will you type it? I do hope you aren't cross that I'm so late sending it. I found it impossible to write driving. Thank you all again so much for, for making our wedding as perfect as possible. Love, Ruth and John. Now here's a letter from uh, John S. Ray to uh, Augusta, Augusta Smallshaw. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, September 6th, 1950. Dear Mrs. Smallshaw, <coughs> I want to thank you very sincerely for the most generous hospitality you all extended to me during my recent visit in your home. I honestly felt as if I had been taken into the family. Red and I had a very busy day last Saturday buying furniture and groceries. If things work out as we expect them to, this coming Saturday the bulk of our furniture should arrive. The two-piece sectional Davenport, large easy chair, ottoman, Dinette table, desk, and chair. 
box springs, and two bookshelves. So far here at the house, our biggest problem has been where to sit and where to eat. Last Saturday, we took care of this by buying a card table and two folding chairs. We're expecting the furniture to make a big difference. Yesterday morning, Red began teaching, teaching at Superior School. From the reports she gives me, she is really going to have her hands full. Neither of us has begun our fall college work yet, but it looks as if we're going to have to set up a pretty rigid time schedule if we're going to do good work at our jobs, keep the house in good order, and get good marks at night school. My brother and father took a number of colored pictures at the wedding, which turned out very well. As soon as we can get some printed, we will send them along to you. Here's hoping that Bud really knuckles down to work on his studying at night. He seems to be a very capable fellow. I would be quite proud to have a chartered accountant for a brother-in-law. Keep working on the trip to Cleveland next spring or summer. We'd love to have you. Love, John. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, August 31st, 1950. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, How lucky can a person be? Everything seems to be so perfect, and to top it all, I got a letter from the East Cleveland Public School Board to say my salary will be $3,075, a little more than I signed my contract for. John's been teasing me that I'm so good, I get a raise before I even start. Anyway, it was a very nice surprise. The only thing I seem to be lacking in is time. There's an awful lot to do just getting things straightened around and cupboards lined and things unpacked and put away. <clears throat> it's really been fun, though. The gas man came first thing Tuesday, then the telephone man came as he was leaving, and I caught the milkman. Carol gave us three sizes of Revere saucepans and a coffee pot. The saucepans saved the day as I have no cooking things. As yet, we have no other furniture, so are eating off packing boxes. We're going shopping tonight. I've already, I've already tried out my oven, it's, and it's very nice. Timer on it, too. I made scalloped potatoes and peach shortcake with whipped cream and veal cutlets. I must get my thank you notes away tomorrow. Sunday we're going to Marion, Ohio, and Tuesday school begins, and then the next week we start back to law school and university, so there's going to be a busy time. Our living room was quite a sight with both our things plus wedding gifts piled high. Oh, I was so cross with the customs in Regina. Remember I had that silver from California forwarded to Cleveland? They sent it back to California, and we had a letter from John's aunts asking why. Everything else went okay at the border, so we were pleased about that. <clears throat> My, but it seems strange to come back and find it so warm, and everyone wearing sunsuits and dresses. It seemed much longer than a month since I was at summer school. I met a girl from one of my classes this summer, and it seemed more like years to me. I'm sure I would have enjoyed the summer more had I known everything would have worked out so well. We've been over to the co-op a couple of times to pick up some of the things we'd left, and there, too, it seemed so long ago. It was nice seeing the kids, but as I said, it seems long ago already. Oh, Mother, did my check come from the Board of Education, and did you forward it here? We've lost some mail. The landlord said he put it in the box, that someone had brought it over, but it was not there when we arrived. The postman knew nothing about it. The only thing we care about is my check, but we'll sit tight till we hear from you. I keep thinking about how nice you all were to make our wedding so nice, and all your friends who came too. John says that he certainly hopes you can come next spring. It would be so nice if you could manage a car and have Bud drive you. John plans to write and mentions several times what a good boy I have for a brother and wants to write to him too. I'll write again. I love you, Ruth and John. P.S. How's Mr. Max Jaw? John says to say we're happy. We are. Love, Ruthie. 
1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, September 11th, 1950. Dearest Mother, Hi. I certainly hope that the reason we haven't heard from you is because you did get away for a holiday. I've been looking for a letter, and again let me say how bad I feel that I didn't get the write-up of the wedding to you sooner. I do hope it wasn't too late. We're enjoying having the proofs of the wedding photos to show, so I'm sure you won't mind me not sending them promptly. My, but we've been so busy since we came back. We went to Marion, Ohio for John's grandparents' 60th, 60th wedding anniversary. There were 40 out of 46 of the family there. It was a nice day, so they had it on the lawn at the back and was very nice. That night we went with Harold and Marge, John's cousins, to Bay Point with four other couples. They had a big tent and truck by the lake. We slept in the truck, so cold. They had sleeping bags, but one day was enough for me. I got hit in the face with the ball playing volleyball. It was okay, but stung my scars. Beginning school just about knocked me out. I thought I had plenty to do at home, but with school too. Well, I have ten lively, with a capital L, kitties. In the first few days we had no time off at lunch, but ate and played with them too. I was so tired when I came home and then had to cook supper. After supper I'd feel like nothing, but John wants me to finish my thank you notes. Well, things are much better now. My kitties are quieting down and we're getting organized. We do have at least half an hour off at lunchtime and with the $150 raise, I figure it's a pretty good job offer after all. Then our desk has arrived and kitchen table but still no other furniture. John did the washing at the laundromat. He's a wonderful person, so helpful, washes the dishes, but he does expect me to keep up too. Saturday, Anne and Wayne Duff invited us to dinner in Akron, and it was so good to see the kids. Joan and Lenny and Vince and Mary were there. It was just wonderful to find we had the same problems. Vince, too, kept getting after Mary, to write thank you notes when she preferred to read a book and John can't understand how I can have energy to read but not write. Then too, Anne had brought dry cottage cheese which I've discovered is almost impossible to moisten so it was fun. We went to church and ate dinner out. Nice boy. I'd encouraged John to play golf so I could get some schoolwork done and as he was leaving, Lenny called and suggested Mary and I go over while the fellows played golf. So we did, and all had dinner, and went to a movie when they came back. It'll take me all year to repay our dinner guests, as they'd had us over before we left, too. John's at his first night law school, so I'll start supper about 8.30. When I start classes, too, it'll be more activity, but very nice, too. Right. How are you? Love, Ruth and John. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, 18, Ohio. September 22nd, 1950. Dearest Mother, I've been carrying this stomped, stamped envelope around all week trying to sandwich in a few minutes to write. The only saving grace about all I've been doing is that they are things that will not have to be done again, at least not all. I certainly was glad to get your letter and also your card. Thanks, dear. I got it on my birthday and rather glad, too. When I went to set breakfast, John had a package and card on the table. He gave me a box of Whitman's sampler and a black silk lace nighty. We both had classes until 9.15, but had supper out at 10 o'clock p.m. It is going to be a busy winter, but interesting. This class of mine are so lively. I've, I've never dreaded every day like I have recently and have had to put so much energy into keeping them in hand. <clears throat> I've had a lot of schoolwork to prepare and trying to finish up my last thank you notes. Thanks, dear. I had just posted Mrs. Steele's and Doreen's notes when I got your letter. Mrs. McPhee, too, and I said I was sorry they hadn't been there. 
It's been very nice hearing the favorable comments about the wedding. Hold the bedspread till I think. I'll enclose the snaps of the house, but we haven't the reprints of the wedding yet. Our colored honeymoon pictures, too, are very good. We have our gold two-piece sectional and lovely desk and bookshelves, but our kitchen chair nor John's big chair, chair haven't yet arrived. John's family are coming in tomorrow and taking us to a ball game, dinner, and play in the evening. Coming to see the house, too, so I've had to get all my school stuff put away and shined up. Just defrosted the fridge again, but haven't finished the ironing. It's so boring. John is a wonderful help. I haven't yet cleaned the rug, and he, keep, he always washes the dishes and sweeps the walk. Last Sunday night, Vince and Mary and Lenny and Joan dropped in unexpectedly, out of curiosity, to see our new furniture, and Miss Bender and Norma Jean, the teacher who drives me home every day. I've been lucky as I ride with John there and get a ride home. Both came in to see our place and seemed to like it. We do. You should have called Marshall. I'm glad you got to Saskatoon, but sorry no further. And what a thrill, a ball game. I was so sick of hearing ball games and baseball scores, I couldn't stand, couldn't stand it. So took a walk around the block, and what? Every house I passed had the radio blaring away, or else you could see the television. All Cleveland Indians baseball games. Oh well, the pressure's off now. I'm glad Bud's better. My courses, too, seem like they'll be a lot of work. American government, good though, and another social studies course. Then after this, only American history, too, and then graduation. We both hope you come down for both our graduations. What is Mrs. Goddard's address? I don't have it. I've been so played out, I went to bed last Saturday at nine. We've been going to church Sunday mornings, but I don't plan to teach Sunday school. We got all the shelves and drawers lined and everything put away and cleaned my Revere pots and pans. You don't know how happy I was to find the birthday card in the mailbox. I was disappointed no picture in the newspaper too, but it was my fault, my procrastination. I'm so sorry Grandma and Grandpa and Mr. Proby weren't mentioned. Good Daddy added their names. I love you and write, love Ruthie. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history, if this interests you. Finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. We have, so far, we have made 561 history videos in seven areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History, which is available on Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.